Hello, and welcome to the Darby Creek Diaries. I'm Gail Thompson, and I'm so glad that you stopped by. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about glow-in-the-dark products. I did a video, like the second or third video I ever did, on a Lawn Fawn card that I'll show here in a little bit. And I just wanted to um, show you some differences and some things that that aren't readily apparent when you first uh, use these products. This is the little card. It's a pop-up box. I used embossing powder and glitter and some Nuvo crystal drops that are glow in the dark. And I'm going to show you how all of this turned out later. But for our experiment, I'm just using some white pigment ink and a, an old, old, old Hero Arts uh, stamp that just is a nice flat square. I'm using Brutus Monroe uh, white pigment ink and that I'm just going to start with the embossing powder first. The first attempt I'm going to just do what you would normally do which is stamp on your ink and try to get a good impression and now I'm just going to add the embossing powder which is wow glow in the dark regular embossing powder nothing nothing different it's going to happen here for a little bit i was pretty brave about not using a coffee filter under there wasn't i i heat embosses now be careful because this will burn uh so kind of get your hot your gun good and hot before you bring it to the paper and that's just layer one. So that's how everybody would normally do it. It's how I'd normally do it. Now on the second example, I'm going to do the same procedure, except for that I'm going to do it twice. You just want to wait for the uh, powder to uh, the embossed thing to kind of cool a little bit before you do it the second time. So right now it's just layer one. So here's layer two of the, um, the ink and now layer two of the powder. And we're gonna put the lid on because I am known for dumping over things. So there is layer two. I flipped the card over and you can tell the second one's a lot deeper and I and it will give you a better uh, imprint and more glow. And I'll show you the results of that later. And then I wanted to show you what words look like using this uh, glow in the dark powder. So as usual, I'm just gonna heat emboss the sentiment here. And go ahead and and heat it up. It's really hard to see. Now I'm going to try using the white ink on black Hero Arts pitch black cardstock. And we're just going to go through the same method because I wanted to see if it would show up better on white cardstock or on black cardstock. I also tried using black ink on white cardstock and it wasn't worth showing you. It doesn't really work very well. So now I'm doing the single layer of heat embossing. And now we're going to go for the second example, which will be our double layered heat embossing. I just wanted to show all the step outs so that you would see what I'm doing and I didn't want to edit out so much that it, everything just sort of popped up on you. So now we can see there's layer one. I hope everybody's doing well. It is super super hot outside so it gives me excuse not to do any work outside and to come in here and do this. And I, I really do feel for the parents that are trying to do the homeschooling and work. You have my utmost respect. My kids are all older. I've got a son in college. He's a senior. He's going to be doing most of his work remote too. Okay, and here's layer two. 
of the embossing powder. And, and you can tell it just makes sense that that would be a little bit uh, deeper and brighter and probably would show up better. All of the embossing or all of the uh, glow-in-the-dark things I kind of had sitting out on a table but I have a basement craft room so it doesn't get a ton of light. You can charge this stuff just by putting it in front of a light. Um, and I would say that any card, it, it'll die pretty quick, but if somebody puts it, you know, out in the light, it'll revive. It doesn't seem to last for a really, really long time, but you can keep reviving it. So if your recipient doesn't get the full effect when they pull out of the envelope, which probably won't, because it's been dark in that envelope. Okay, so here are examples. Disregard that middle one because we're not going to do that. Now I've got the Nuvo Sour Apple Glow in the Dark Drops. And I just wanted to flunk something down here on some black cardstock. And there's a good shot of the bottle. And I got to set that aside to dry. And we're going to do it again on a white piece of cardstock. I'm not terribly artsy here, but we're just doing a little experiment. So we're going to set that aside. I'm going to let that dry overnight. Now we're going to move on to the glow in the dark glitter. I I'm going to look up some resources for that. The kind that I have is Martha Stewart's. It was made by EK Success. But of course, like a lot of my supplies, it's really, really old. And there is a good shot of the bottle. But you may still be able to find it at uh, Michael's or something like that. But I will list everything I can below or examples of things that are very similar. Just going to plunk the glitter on and dump the rest back in the bottle and see if I can not knock over the bottle. And then I got smart and took off the fine tip to my glue. I love this glue. And we're just gonna repeat. That glue, by the way, is glitter art glue, or art glitter glue. Go let that dry overnight. So here is the finale to our experiment. There's the glow in the dark powder. And I'm showing you that in the light and then boom. It takes it a minute for it to kind of wake up. I noticed that with all of them. So that's what it looks like in the bottle. And I, it hadn't been under any, you know, strong light for quite a while. And then here we go. It's pretty much a, as expected. It uh, is a little darker on the one we double embossed and it was really hard to see the Halloween, but it was there. And now I'm going to show you what it looked like on the black cardstock. And there we go. Same thing. Uh, I think it really does show up probably better on the white. Uh, and then the happy Halloween I'm trying to show you there, it's not showing up at all. So I think that you're better off on white paper. Here is our glitter, and that's what it looks like when you turn off the lights. See how some of it's dark? It's, if it doesn't get light to charge it, 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 it needs to have light particles to, to get charged. It just absorbs it somehow. It's really cool. So here's what it looked like in the light, and here's what it looks like now. It does a pretty good job. I'd be happy with it. You just have to kind of use a pretty thick layer. Now here comes the black, and it doesn't look as it has a, a black enough layer, but it absolutely is showing us nothing. So even if I would have added more, I don't think it would have made any difference. So I'm going to say that that's a thumbs down. Now we're going to do the Nouveau drops and see what that looks like in the dark. There you go. I just think that's neat how it takes it kind of a second to decide to turn on. Okay, the Nubo drops in 
on the white cardstock. Looking good. And that was a nice thick application. I don't know if, you know, I wouldn't try to do anything real thin. Now we have it on the dark. And it looks pretty good, but I don't think as good as on the white. So I think I've decided it looks best on white cardstock. Here's the little card that I made. I'm going to just look at the sentiment, the trick or treat, and the monster, and then the glitter up front. And that's what it looked like in the dark. Oh, and the little guy's bow tie. I must have embossed that or put glimmer drops or uh, nuvo drops on it. I can't remember. But that's a fun little card. I really enjoyed making that. Put a link up in the corner for that tutorial. Now that was my, one of my very first ones, so be forgiving. Now I'm just gonna show you everything out with the light on and then turn out the lights. And there you go. I hope that you enjoyed this little trial and that you will give it a try. Come back and see me and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I love having you. Um, comment below if you have any questions or if you have ideas of things that you'd like me to try. I'm always listening. You have a fabulous week. I'm going to leave some other videos here for you to check out when you get uh, some spare time. I hope you take time to craft something and that you stay well and have a fabulous day. Bye-bye.